Yeah, so I'm Raelis Vasquez. I'm from, well, let's go in order. My medium of choice is painting, so oil on canvas, and usually, well, sometimes uh, graphite, so I do some drawing as well. And I'm from Dominican Republic, immigrated to the States in 2002. So what is it, what is it like to, to, to express yourself um, as an immigrant in America? Uh, it's, it's useful, I would say, because um, it allows me to contemplate my experience. Um, otherwise, I don't think I would be involved in that area. So it allows me to do the extensive research that I do. The because you know it takes like a serious investment to come up with the ideas and. I mean, yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of um, investigating, a lot of contemplating, bef all before these pieces come, like before the first brushstroke comes together. So yeah, I think there's a lot to say about immigration just, or I don't think it's really about like the States, I think any place that you live in, I think immigration is gonna be a, an issue that's worthy of addressing, you know. The job of a true artist begins before picking up a pen. We research, we research, then research again. Whatever medium we in, we draw off inspiration. Still the pictures we paint are without that to come from within. Yeah. So what type of, you mentioned research, like what type of research goes into like creating this piece of you? Yeah. Um, so there's the formal elements, and those are the things that they're the most visual. So getting the composition, like I'm really focusing on getting the compositions to be complex. So like my previous works were mostly straightforward um, portraiture, but now I'm trying to make the space have secondary signifiers that can create a, a larger narrative, you know? so. It's like, sure, it's figures, and if there's figures, that's what you're going to pay attention to, but if there's many things around it, it's a decision you make to include those things. If nothing's around it, that's a decision as well. So putting things around it means that these things have some sort of significance, and then making those decisions um, definitely inform the narrative. So there's research on that, just compositionally. And then also uh, doing a lot of reading on authors, looking at other artists, not necessarily from the States or the Dominican Republic, but looking at other artists who are also invested in representation and also invested in talking about the issue of immigration. So it's looking at what other folks are doing as well, or um, the attitude of nations towards immigrants, it's also helpful, and then researching up on that. Your work is, is representing a specific group of people. Right. Um, specific values, outlooks on lives, daily routines. Um, how do you, in your practice, um, incorporate their voice into your work? Yeah. So the people, because it depends. So some of the works are about the people that I'm representing. Some of the works are about an idea that I have and then I find models to fit that idea. And that's usually how it works. But regarding Dominican Republic, so like ideas of vulnerability are important to me and masculinity in relationship to vulnerability. And I'm interested in that relationship where men aren't necessarily like it's not promoted for men to be vulnerable, you know, especially in Dominican Republic, that's like a taboo, you know? So I'm interested in that, um, in representing people in that space where it's not their masks who say who they are, it's themselves with all their flaws and all their insecurities and the weight that's on them. I think it's brave to paint the vulnerabilities in men who hide behind facade and put the mask in masculine. 
Man to man, I understand sometimes we don't get it. But what composition isn't simple next to complexities and privilege? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so, you know, growing up in the Dominican Republic, I come from Mao, Mao Barbeta. That's what the, the, the town is called. And just the town itself or the, the city itself is known as like a countryside. So a lot of trees, like not much going on. But I come from like a very, like it's called Pueblo de Dios. Um, which is like town of God translated roughly um, here in Pueblo de Dios it's extremely uh, like not many resources at all so I grew up with barely any running water um, I remember going to like a river with buckets and then traveling back home and using that as like I don't know what we showered with or sometimes what we drank from or like wash dishes with so that was kind of the situation and even then we would see people who were poorer than us so like you still see your privilege in that situation me coming to the states and me like going to university like my privilege is extremely evident to me even though i'm a afro latino immigrant in the states like i have my own um, battles and challenges and i guess that makes me even more invested um in these topics. You come from rough conditions. I'm almost sure you had to make a bunch of tough decisions. As a son of an immigrant, I relate to your journey impartial. What was it like telling your parents that you gonna go to art school? Yeah. There's there's a I don't know who said it, but there's this quote that said, There's no reason to be creative unless you have a problem to solve. So it's usually folks who have let's say rough upbringings that are inclined to be more creative you know that's I mean there's things that I had to there's a lot of things that I was thinking about things that they didn't line up things that I've like become more and more skeptical about as um, I grow older so like investigating this stuff is useful as a person who's like just living in the states or living living in America, you know. Um, yeah, definitely wasn't a, a easy decision, especially like with, with my family. Like, I'm gonna be an artist. Like, no, you're not. How did that conversation <laughs> go? Um, very discouraging, I would say, for the longest. It only works out after you prove that you've begun to monetize your practice and that's not helpful to the practice you know so like if you're if you start making money and that becomes a part of what you think about while you're working that's going to hurt the work tremendously so it's like for my family it's like yeah you're an artist whatever and i could be extremely invested for years and years and years which i was um and they were supported at all until I started to get like a little bit of a taste of success. Then they're like, okay, okay, I see it. <laughs> you know? You recently just graduated, so I know you ain't a dummy. How do you survive and separate the art from the money? How do you keep the ideas and the thoughts and the motivations of commerce separate from your work and also at the same time make sure that this is something yeah so that's tough i mean there's there's solutions around that uh, commission work is financial and then the rest is the work that you do whether it sells or not there's one that's one way to to go about it but i've been fortunate where i've like met some a couple of collectors and i mean i try to get my work out there i think that's important it's not I don't necessarily want the work to be here. Like that's not gonna, like that helps me, but that doesn't, that's not where I want the work to live. So I try to apply to exhibitions. I've, I've gotten to the point where I'm like getting invited to some exhibitions. So that, that, um, that allows the work to get out there. And then it's as important, you gotta make it important. So like, if you want the work to get out there, then you have to make time for that. You can't, yeah, because there's also that side where you're just, you know, being a creative is 
you being in the studio, but it's also you being um, able to sustain yourself financially. So you got to realize that it is important for your work to be out there. It is important for, let's say, kids of color to encounter themselves in galleries, you know? So I make it a priority and then it, it becomes easier. You actually just got invited to uh, display your work. Yeah, um, yeah. In a, in a few exhibits. Yeah, I'd yeah. I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, what that means to you, like? Um, yeah, no. There's, so there's three exhibits coming up. Two that I got invited to and another one that I applied to. Um, and the one that I'm, I applied to is the one that's most exciting to me because that one is, ex I mean, it's extremely competitive. It's a, it's a XL Catlin um, prize exhibition. And, you know, they have first, second, and third place. Let's see how that goes. But yeah, it's gonna, it's a traveling show. So it's gonna be at the New York Academy of Art. The, I think it's a San Francisco Institute of Art. And then it's gonna be here in Chicago as well. So, I mean, that one I'm very excited about. Congratulations on your work being selected for the Catlin. If I'm so lucky, I'll tour someday the same way, but we're rapping. I follow in the footsteps of giants, and so do you, which makes me interested to know who you look up to. So a part of this goes back to what I was saying with the research I was doing. So some of it is author. So I, reading is a very important part of the practice because it's a it's a different language, like painting is a language in and of itself, but then there's a different, there's different ways to communicate, right? And we call them mediums or languages. But other painters, uh, Njideka Akunili Crosby, she's a Nigerian born artist who works out of, I believe it's LA now, and she's absolutely brilliant. She makes um, more complex compositions. So yeah, I got a lot of inspiration from her and she's also talks about immigration so that yeah these people they're like they create a map where you can and where you can see where you fit in or when you can place yourself on there also like Harry James Marshall like they they allow us to place ours like if these artists weren't there then I would probably be completely lost you know like I, I'd be lost in my investigations also um Barkley Hendrix his portraiture is extremely powerful, and I was looking at him for a very long time. Um, and an author, Juno Diaz. Um, yeah, there's there's a there's a long list, but those are I would say the most prominent that I that I think about. Anyone who doesn't know who Kerry James is should do their homework. But I'm curious to know how you place value on your own work. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's always like extremely complicated for every artist, like valuing your work, you know, like the, the monetary value, like it's always a challenge. Um, the way I like to do it is I consider, I often consider the buyer so I can, I consider who like, cause it's, it's a very difficult thing, not I represent people of color and as one status goes up, the value of the work goes up and fewer people can own it, right? And the folks who can own it are often people who have old money and not a lot of people of color have old money, you know? So that creates like a huge um, complication. So I, I'm still wrestling with that definitely, like how do I get my work into the hands of the people who I'm representing and one solution is doing mural work so doing public art I think that that's a, a very effective way to do it also doing prints um, where you can have additions and they'll be priced a lot cheaper than like let's say the original pieces but I'm I'm interested in having my work in uh, art institutions, so like having them specifically like in museums, because I don't know, at the Art Institute, there's not many people of color being represented, so which leads us to like the importance of representation, you know, and that's like something that I think about often, but it it's also depends on like, because 
you can be an artist like I could be an artist and say like okay I don't see my work um, doing well in murals and then like what how do you how do you solve that problem or like I, I usually when you do prints the value of your work goes down so how do you solve that problem and I think it's something to wrestle with and something to get really creative about because it's it's a challenge, especially if you want your work to get into the hands of those people that you're representing. Access is key and some doors don't have a knob. What would you do for work if painting wasn't your job? Yeah, I was recently asked, like, what would you do if you weren't a painter? And I'm like, I don't know, to be honest, like, I've been doing this for so long and I'm so invested in what I'm doing, but I don't, I think I would use other mediums to, make the painting evolve but um i also write a lot but i don't know what i'm gonna do with that and i don't really want to do anything with that necessarily that kind of helps this process or helps me think um but yeah i think i think i'm sticking to painting for at least for a little bit <laughs> we discussed a bunch i had a lot to ask is there anything else that you would like to add i think we should go over the the importance of representation okay. yeah so representation it's it can I mean you can use representation as a an adjective oh this is representative work you can describe what kind of the kind of work one is doing but I don't see it that way at all I see it as um, what does it mean when someone is being represented what does it mean when something is being represented there's this quote by George Gerbner, who's a cult of, he, he's the founder of the cultivation theory, and he said, representation in the fictional world signifies social, social importance. Absence means symbolic annihilation. And I think that's something to think about. What does it mean when you go to the movies and 90% of the movies don't represent you. You know, what does it mean when a little girl doesn't see herself being reflected in the culture as an engineer or a doctor? What does that do to you? What does that do when you grow up and you don't see mirrors of yourself? Um, Juno Diaz, he wrote this piece and I'm gonna paraphrase, this is like, I don't remember exactly, but who was explaining about like vampires and how, you know, vampires don't see themselves reflected in the mirror, right? And it's like, there's this idea that monsters don't see themselves reflected in the mirror. But you know, Diaz was like, no, 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 it's, that's probably not it. I think it's that if you want to turn someone into a monster, you deny them any reflection of themselves at a cultural level, you know? And that's deep because like growing up you don't see yourself being reflected in the culture unless it's in like stereotypical ways and you're like what's going on in this world that thinks that people that look like me don't exist and that makes me super skeptical and also when you get represented it's in inaccurate ways so i think representation is something that's extremely valuable and gets like the importance gets underestimated because if you saw people of color being reflected every day like what would that do to we both aware color? of how society illustrates our complexions that's why i represent like democratic elections the points you raise are valid what we really need balance your work is one of a kind and your mind has many facets so i thank you for your time your insight and sharing your talents